Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Hoffman. I'm a software engineer, a security researcher, and a technical author based out of the Pacific Northwest. Today I want to do another introductory video where I talk a little bit about SQL injection. So before we can jump into that, I want to start off by giving a background in SQL. So typically, when you interact with a website today, if you interact with a website that allows you to send user input back to the server, and that user input is stored between sessions, there's a good probability that that user input is stored on a database on a web server owned by whoever owns that website. And if we assume that that data is stored in a database on a web server, there's a good probability that SQL is used to query that database. So SQL is a domain specific language, it's a query language that is designed for managing data held in databases, so relational databases. And we can jump through the Wikipedia a bit, not too much of this is really important for this video, but SQL has been around for a while. It was initially developed at IBM by Donald Chamberlain, and this was in the 1970s. And there's many implementations of relational databases that you can query using SQL. So examples of this would be Postgres. Another example would be MariaDB. A lot of people know MySQL, SQLite, etc. Even Microsoft and Oracle have their own implementations of relational databases that can be queried using the SQL query language. So this is a language that's used for managing, so that's create, read, update, delete data inside of a database. So what is SQL injection then? If you saw my prior video that was on command injection, one thing that I said is that injection attacks are attacks whereby a hacker is able to insert their own commands into a command line interface. So what does that mean? That means that injection attacks are not particularly bound to SQL in any way, not particularly bound to shell interpreters. Any type of interpreter where a user can provide a string and then the operating system or some software on that operating system will perform operations as a result of the provided string can be vulnerable to injection attacks. So in the case of SQL injection, what we're talking about is a form of attack where an application allows a user to send back data and that user sends back additional commands with that data and those commands somehow are executed by the SQL interpreter. So this is SQL injection in a nutshell. Now, if we're to dig through the Wikipedia page, you'll see that there's a number of classifications of SQL injection. And there's a number of ways that SQL injection can occur. However, at its basis, most SQL injection is pretty simple. You have a statement. That statement has a variable in it. And by some method, a hacker is able to provide data inside of this variable that causes the SQL interpreter to think it's getting two commands rather than one command with a variable, or more than two. So the, the attacker provides commands and it tricks the SQL interpreter into executing those commands, hence compromising the database. So if we jump over to the damn vulnerable web application, this is a intentionally vulnerable application for the purpose of teaching and, and learning. The DVWA has a section on SQL injection. It says vulnerability SQL injection. And they have this user ID field here. And if we put a number in, for example, user ID one and submit, it returns us some information. Now it returns us information. For example, it's gonna show us the user's first name and the user's surname that correspond with the user ID that we submitted. So this application is only intending to give us one user at a time. Now, if we open up the developer tools and we open up the network tab, we can try putting in another ID and we can actually see this request going across the network. So in, in this query string parameters, which you can also see up here, query parameters, you'll notice that the ID two was passed back and what happened on the server was the server is gonna be querying a SQL database and returning to us the first name and the surname. So let's imagine what this query looks like on the server. Well, given what we know, it probably looks like this. 
select first name, surname from a database of users where the user ID is equal to the input. So it's a pretty simple query. So when we send that to back to the server, the server is going to generate this query. Say give us the first name and the surname from the user's database where the user ID is equal to whatever we sent back. So when we're looking at this from the perspective of an attacker attempting to inject additional commands, we're going to be looking at this input field as kind of our place where our payload will be executed. So let's try to break out of this SQL statement. For starters, let's try to get multiple users instead of just one user returned. Now, a way that we can do this is we can pass through this value, which is the percentage sign, interprets to false. So this is going to be input right here, where it's going to say from users where user ID is equal to false. Now, user IDs are all going to be equal to true, provided they are strings of any given length. So then we want to say or 0 equals 0. And what that's going to say is any user ID we want returned. And we'll add a comment at the end to comment out anything that happens after that in the SQL interpreter. Now, you can see that by saying we want any user ID, we get all of the users in the database back, even though the intended functionality is simply to give us one user. Now, we can do a little bit more than this too. For example, we can break out the same way that we did or 0 equals 0, but we can start requesting more information from the database. So we can use a union and say select null and version. And now we've gained access to the very particular version of MariaDB, which is being used in this application to store all of this data. And that can give us more insight into certain types of vulnerabilities outside of SQL injection. Now, what other information might we want to dig out from this database? Well, perhaps we want to see what user is executing the query because there is a user in the SQL database that's going to be executing this SQL query and returning the results to us. So once again, we break out the same way. But this time, we want to see what user is executing the query. And here, we can see that the user is app at localhost. What if we want to get, for example, the database name? Well, it turns out that it's pretty simple to get the database name as well. We might even be able to get the passwords of the user. All we have to do is, now that we've broken out of this input, we put our own query after the breakout from the input, and the query will be run against the SQL interpreter, even though the developer did not intend for the SQL interpreter to run anything aside from this query with a numerical input for the user ID. So that's SQL injection in a nutshell. Thanks for watching.